Hi everyone, this is Abdul from Pythonist. I hope you're doing great. If you're following me on my channel, you may have noticed that recently I have started to create some random but interesting stuff about Python. Because my mission is to get naked amazing Python technologies here on this channel. So join me on this journey by subscribing to my channel if you still don't. Now comes to the point. The latest version of Python, which is Python 3.8, has been released. And it was in beta since the summer. But now, we got an official and stable version of Python 3.8. The official documentation of this release is a little bit complicated. So I have divided this into five different sections. In the first section, we will explore what new features introduced in this version. Then we will talk about new precise types. And in the third section, we will explore the debugging related improvements. After that, we will talk about optimizations this version brings. And finally, we will take a look on new modules added to the standard library. That's going to be very interesting. So watch this video till to the end. So you'll be able to make decisions about the upgrades of your existing applications. Let's get started. The very first and the biggest change in Python 3.8 is the introduction of Walrus operator. It also called assignment expression and it's denoted by a notation colon equal. Assignment expression allow you to assign and return a value in the same expression. It means it allow a value to be assigned to a variable even a variable that doesn't exist yet in the context of an expression rather than a standalone statement. So for example, I have a variable as name and I want to assign it a value Abdul. So typically we do something like name equal to Abdul and then print that name variable. But in Python 3.8, we can say print into name colon equal Abdul. It assign the value and immediately print that out. But keep in mind that the Walrus operator doesn't do anything that isn't possible without it. But one thing that shows the benefit of this operator is in the while loops where we need to initialize and update a variable. You can get the much more detailed and various examples on the official documentation on python.org. I'll post the link in the description below. That's great. Let's talk about the second feature in Python 3.8 and its positional only parameters. In previous version of Python, there was no easy way to specify that the arguments should be positional only in your own functions. It was only specific to built-in functions. It's possible to simulate positional only behavior using static args, but this is less flexible less reliable and even force you to implement your own argument parsing. In Python 3.8, you can use the slash symbol to denote that all the arguments before it must be specified by position, not by keyword. So here's an example from official documentation. In this example, all of the arguments are positional. In previous version of Python, z would be considered a keyword argument given the above function power into 2 and 10 and power into 2, 10 and 5 are valid calls while power into 2, 10 and z equal to 5 is not a valid call. A benefit of using positional only argument is that you can more easily refactor your functions. In particular, you can change the name of your parameters without worrying that other code depends on those names. That's awesome. Let's talk about the new precise types. Python is dynamically typed, but support the use of type hints via the typing module to allow third-party tools to verify Python programs. There are four new paths about type checking that have been accepted. The first one is the literal type, which restricts expression to a specific value or a list of values, not necessarily of the same type. One use case of literal is to be able to precisely add types 
when string arguments are used to describe specific behavior. So here is an example function get underscore status, which is taking the port variable of type integer and the literal values can be connected and disconnected. The next one is the typed dict. It lets you create a dictionaries where the values associated with certain keys are restricted to one or more specific types. Traditionally, dictionaries have been annotated using dict. The issue is that this only allowed one type for the keys and one type for the values, often leading to annotations like dict into string or any. As an example, consider a dictionary that registers information about Python versions. So we will have two keys, the version and the release year. The value corresponding to version is a string, while release underscore year is an integer value. This cannot be precisely represented using dict. With the new typed dict, you can do in the following way. So we will take the typed dict class as the base class and specify the type for the version and the release underscore year keys. The type checker will then be able to infer that pi38 into version has type string, while pi38 into release underscore year is an integer. The next one is the final. The final decorator and the final type annotation indicated that the decorated and the annotated objects should not be overridden subclassed or reassigned at any point. The final decorator that can be applied to classes and methods. Classes decorated with the final decorator cannot be subclassed, while methods decorated by the final decorator cannot be overridden by subclass. That's great. Now, let's talk about some debugging related improvements in Python 3.8. The first thing is the improvement in f-strings. F-strings were introduced in Python 3.6 and achieve very high popularity. They might be the most common reason for Python libraries only being supported on version 3.6 or later. An f-string is a formatted string. You can recognize it by the leading f to a string. Let me show you an example of f-string in previous versions of Python like 3.6 or 3.7. You can see an example code here. So I have defined a variable as my underscore var and utilize that variable inside the string statement between the curly braces. So when you're using fstring, you can enclose variables and even expressions inside curly braces. They will be then evaluated at runtime and included in the string. You can have several expressions in one string. That's what we have in the existing versions. But in Python 3.8, you can use assignment expression inside fstring statement. Just make sure to surround the assignment expression with parentheses. So for example, if we have the radius r and fstring as f, we can get the circumference directly inside the fstrings. But hold on, the interesting point is that no, you can add equal to sign at the end of an expression and it will print both the expression and its value. So for example, we have a variable as pi equal to 3.14. It will give us pi equal to 3.14. This is a shorthand that typically will be most useful when working interactively or adding print statements to debug your script. In earlier versions of Python, you needed to spell out the variable or expression twice to get the same information. That's great. The next thing is the warnings about the dangerous syntax. Python has a syntax warning which can warn about dubious syntax that is typically not a syntax error. Python 3.8 adds a few new ones that can help you during coding and debugging your code. For example, it's easy to miss a comma when you are writing out a long list, especially when formatting it vertically. Forgetting a comma in a list of tuples will give a confusing error message about tuples not being callable. 
But Python 3.8 additionally emits a warning that points toward the real issue. The warning correctly identifies the missing comma as the real culprit. And finally, let's discuss some improvements in the context of optimization. There are several optimizations made for Python 3.8. Some of that can make code run faster, others reduce the memory footprint. For example, looking up fields in a named tuple is significantly faster in Python 3.8 as compared with the Python 3.7. Unless save some space when they are initialized from each rebus with a known length. This can save memory. So for example, if I have a sys.getSize of list into range, past a range for a list, and do the same thing for the Python 3.8, you can see the difference between the sizes of both of these lists. So in this case, the list uses about approximately 11% less memory in Python 3.8 compared with Python 3.7. The subprocess module can now use the os.posix-spawn function in some cases for better performance. Currently, it is only used on macOS and Linux on the base of some conditions. shuttle.copyfile.copy.copy2.copy3 and .move now use platform-specific fast copy system calls on Linux and macOS in order to copy the file more efficiently. Forced copy means that the copying operation occurs within the kernel, avoiding the use of user space buffer in Python. The default protocol in the pickle module is now protocol 4, first introduced in Python 3.4. It offers the better performance and smaller size compared to the Protocol 3 of Pickle module available since Python 3.0. In Python 3.8, reduced an overhead of converting arguments passed to many built-in functions and methods. This speed up calling some simple built-in functions and methods up to 20 to 50 percent. And in Python 3.8, load underscore clover instructions are 30 percent faster. So these were some of the improvements related to optimizations in Python 3.8. You should have very few issues running Python 3.7 code in Python 3.8. Upgrading your environment to run Python 3.8 is therefore quite safe, and you would be able to take advantages of the optimizations made in the new version. But different beta versions of Python 3.8 have already been available for months, so hopefully most bugs are already sequestered. However, if you want to be conservative, you might hold out until the first maintenance release, which is Python 3.8.1 is available. The exciting news is that the first maintenance release, Python 3.8.1 is available at the time of recording. So it means that you can safely play around with this version and take benefit of its great optimizations and new features. I think that's enough for this video. I hope you'll enjoy the content. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you will get a notification for any fantastic video in the future. Thanks for watching.